Somehow, Happis returned. Greetings, survivors and friends, and welcome to probably the 50th or so video I've made about Happis Island now on this channel. That aging Sith Lord of the Rust map world that, just like the real things, had a few too many reinventions and refuses to die. And even though Facepunch have now officially retired the Happis map, yet again it is rising from the ashes, and I will have all the details of where and when you can play on it once more in this vid. But first, a brief history lesson. Rust Legacy, for those old enough to remember, started off life on a static map. Ah, the good old days. But then in 2014, the reboot switched to procedural maps, as we still have today. However, the problem with procedural maps is that, just like Rust itself, they're always changing, and learning a new layout every wipe isn't everyone's cup of tea. So in 2015, a brand new static map was born, Happis Island, designed to be learnable, dependable, familiar, Terra firmer if you like. And oh, that this could have been the end of the story, but Terra did not stay quite so firmer, and the following years would see it trail behind procedurals most of the time, always playing second fiddle and receiving several facelifts until eventually, in early 2021, a major graphical overhaul hit Rust in the form of the HDRP backport, which upgraded nearly all the textures in the game and changed so much stuff that Happis was temporarily taken offline to apply them all by hand. That temporary offlineness would end up being just over a year, in which time the map making community also took it upon themselves to make their own version called Happis Remastered, so that eventually in May 2022, Happis Island lovers had more choice than ever. Although, sadly, the community map had to be squished a bit to make the hype map work, and the map isn't really supported anymore. However, in the months that followed, the official map started to trail behind once again, until just last month it was decided to finally pull the plug on the whole damn thing and concentrate on other stuff. Fair enough. Now. Maybe Happis was never for you, but I know it had a pretty big following, and no small amount were upset at the official map's passing. Well, the community is still not ready to let it die with or without dignity, and so a brand new project is here, conforming as closely as possible to the last iteration of the official map and without any major distortions, but there are quite a few improvements. And the intention of ongoing support and updates. It's landing on select servers with the next wipe on April the 6th, and will soon thereafter be made available to one and all. I've got access to the map now, though. So I wanted to make this vid to give you a quick tour and show you some of the new features, and then I'll tell you where you can start playing. But first, thanks to today's video partner, NordVPN, has this ever happened to you? A totally legitimate looking pop-up saying that you need to update your antivirus, how helpful, but oh no! It was actually a scam, and now your whole base is rigged to be deleted unless you cough up all your scrap to the ransomers. Joking aside though, ransomware is no joke, which is where NordVPN can help, because it's much more than just a VPN. One of its many features is threat protection, which will block any sussy websites, trackers, and intrusive ads before you get to them, and sniff out malware-ridden files. Of course, it also hides your activity and IP address, and lets you enjoy content from any location in the world, regardless of where you're actually hiding, thanks to over 5,000 super-fast servers in 60 countries. And you can get all this and more with a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee with my exclusive creator deal by using my link below and code SHADOWFRAX. There's a Nord app for Windows. Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, Android TV, and probably even your cat. It works whilst you're out and about, and can be used on up to six devices simultaneously with unlimited bandwidth. So click the link below now to get my exclusive creator deal with 30 day money back guarantee and use code SHADOWFRAX. Back to the video, so here's a side by side of the official map at its end and the new community happis, as it will be known. This'll just be an overview, but I believe there is going to be a vid out there made by someone else that gives a full blow by blow walkthrough of everything, so I'll link that in the description, hopefully. Shape-wise, it's almost the same, but the desert has been completely reworked, especially the bit known affectionately as the blob, which has shrunk and is now greener, with more cliffs around the sphere tank, plus snow has reclaimed the mountain nearby. The sphere tank itself is still here, with a couple of major upgrades. First, four crates at the top, and the reason for this being the return of the jump the way the sphere tank was always meant to be. There's also a bunker nearby with a blue card, and the canyon is back with the convoy. Pretty much all of the familiar landmarks are here in the places you remember them, and remade as close to the original as possible, with a few 
improvements. The launch site is of course still in the centre of the map and Outpost B3 is back. The compound is where it should be, but one thing you'll notice is that there isn't an Airwolf vendor here anymore. I wonder why that could be. And there's the usual oasis nearby, although the sperm cat has been moved to another location in the east because you don't need it right next to the oxen, do you? Sites A and B and the listening station are all here where you would expect them to be. There's even the crashed plane, bonus points, and the cave behind the waterfall. More bonus points, although the waterfall is currently dammed so it isn't exactly behind anything at the moment. Plus the refinery now has an actual refinery. A large one that is, utilising an as yet unused model to give you a three level refining experience. This is a very nice feature. The junkyard is in its usual place too, but has been redesigned and expanded to straddle the road on both sides. Plus there's a new jump puzzle here for an elite crate which requires very good timing and has some rads around it. The Arctic Research Base is in the north of the island, and naturally there's the loading docks which have been tweaked very slightly. But for every familiar monument, it seems a new one has been added. Up on the mountain overlooking the sphere tank, there's a new weather station with an MLRS, perfect spot for that sort of thing, and there's a very sneaky entrance just underneath which leads up to it through some bunkers. Part of the highest peak on the island has been eroded too, and this was a practical thing to help the height map to fit without having to distort it. But in the process, a quarry has been added here which kind of makes sense if you think about it. There's a new guard tower up from launch which has a green card swipe to access a few crates and a recycler. The excavator has been added to the desert. Also the bandit camp has been added over in the southwest, which explains why you can't buy minis at the outpost now. There's an extensive underground train tunnel network which goes all the way to the listening station island. And two underwater labs. There's also an absolute shed load of new tunnels, caves and bunkers that have been added for you to explore and in some cases inhabit. And over on the northwest corner of the island, if you whip out your bins, you can spot this thing just off the coast. And I've been told this is about all I can show you at the moment. You'll just have to discover what's there for yourself. Now, having spoken to Cyphex, who's taking charge of the map and will be keeping it up to date, I can tell that a lot of love is being poured into this. It's not just a token replacement, but a proper passion project for the community, and there are so many small but important quality of life adjustments too, such as a full rework of the node spawns, more ramps in the rocks on every large cliff face to help with climbing, a rework to the keycard progression for a more balanced experience, and here's a map showing you where you'll find them, for instance, and even a rework to player spawns so that you won't spawn in front of cliffs, but only in front of spill-offs and gradual beaches with a chance to spawn at the listening station island too. There are even scientists in the military tunnels and the heavies at the oil rig work. Everything here is, of course, subject to change and will continue to be developed, with plans going forward aiming to introduce an above ground train track and keep pace with anything else that gets added to the procedural version, space permitting. As I say, this isn't an exhaustive walkthrough, but I'll link to one in the description when it becomes available. So you ask, where and when can I return to Happis? Well, on the 6th of April it will be going live at first exclusively on Rostified US and EU Zen Labs official servers, and a week later will be released for everyone else to use via the Community Happis Discord and Loan Design for free. Although if you'd like to support the ongoing development there will be a Patreon. Use of the map does require a small plugin to enable stuff made with Rust Edit, but this shouldn't require any servers running it to be under the modded tab. I'll leave all the relevant details and links in the description, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on whether this scratches your happiest itch or not, and whether you think you'll be giving it a whirl. Please leave me a like and a sub if you enjoyed this vid, and if not, then well done you for making it this far. You can check me out also on Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, and my Steam group. All the links are below. I shall catch you all very soon, but in the meantime, keep calm and stay rusty. Cheerio. <laughs>